Hi, and welcome back to my channel, UiPath with Yebe. Today, we're looking at some activities that can help you generate random data when you are doing your development. Uh, this is the first video in a series about testing, and I don't know very much about testing. So if you have some ideas or some input to those videos, let me know in the comments below or find me on LinkedIn and just connect with me. I'll be happy to do that. And of course, as always, if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And also, if you do like my channel, make sure you subscribe to it and hit the notification bell. Um, do it right now, because then you'll be notified when I put out new videos. But we're here to talk about some activities, so let's just get to it. So I'm inside Studio, and the first thing you want to check when you open a new solution and want to work with these activities is you want to go to the project pane, and then in the dependencies uh, tree up here, you want to make sure that the uipath.testing.activities package is installed. If it is not, make sure you go to the package manager and do install it. That will give you some new activities in your activities pane. And what I sometimes do uh, when I install a new package is I go here to the uh, filter option and group the activities by packages, because then it's really easy to find what you just installed. And we are looking for the uipath.testing.activities package. And if we uh, open that, we can see that there are sort of three main groups in here, data, test, data queries, and verification. And these two groups we'll look at in a later video. In this one, we're looking at uh, this group. And these are the activities that we'll be looking at today with the exception of attach document that we'll return to in a, in a later video. But we'll look at all of these other random data generation activities. So let's start with uh, the first one, given name. And um, this could have been first name. But what this will do is simply generate a random first name for you. So we will uh, create a new variable, press Control K, and we'll just call it first name because that's what I usually call a given name. Now we have an activity that will save a given name to the first name uh, variable. Then we'll drag in a last name activity that will do the exact same thing, generate a last name uh, randomly, and we'll save that to a new variable called last name. And just for the fun of it, let's go to our activities pane and do a log message. And we will just type in the log message name and we will then add the first name and a space, and then the last name. And if we run this and go to the output pane, we can now see that in the output pane, there is a new name, and that is Cole Frysock. And if we run it again, we'll see a new name in just a second, and that would be Dortha Klein. So it's just generating random names for us, and we can use that however we see fit. So let's go back to the activities pane and into the uh, testing data group here. So we could do a random number. And you set a minimum, we'll just say 15, and a maximum, we'll say 30, and that will output a number into a new variable. We'll just call it random number, like that. And we will do the exact same thing as we did with the uh, name. We'll do a log message. And we will say random number is. And then I'll put the random number to a string like that. And we'll wait just a second before we run it again. We can go back to the testing activities and we can do a random uh, string, for example. This is going to be a completely random string. Uh, you can select between lowercase, uppercase, camel case, or mixed. We'll just do mixed. And we'll just say the default value of a length of 10 characters. This is not going to be the quick brown fox or something like that. It's just going to be a completely random string of characters. So we'll output that to a new variable called random string. And we'll just copy and paste in the log message, and then we will say random string is random string. And we don't have to convert that to a string because it is already a string. Right, let's try and run it one more time. And there we go, and we go to the output window, and we can now see that the name is Tyler Gandhi, the random number is 21, the random string is whatever that is. Um, so these activities are actually working. Let's go back to the activities and see what we have. We have a random date. And the random date, you can select between um, a minimum date, we'll just say February 1st, 
as the minimum date and then as the maximum February 28th. And then we'll output that to a random date variable. I will copy and paste a log message in, move that to the right position. There we go. And then we will say random date is, and then take the random date and we will just convert that to a long date string. And you could format that date however you want. What you're getting back is a date object. So you can do whatever you want with that random date object as you could with any other date object. Right. So what we've covered now is the given name, the last name, the random date, random number, random string. The ones we have left are the random value and address activities. So let's try the random value activity here. What this takes is an argument that is going to be a file name. And I have here on my desktop, I have a file called colors.txt. That's just a text file with a number of colors in it. The random value activity will take one of those values. It could be a CSV file as well, but this is just a text file with no uh, delimiters. But what the activity will do is simply select one line from this text file. So we will go back to Studio and we'll just type in the name of the file. And then we will create a new variable called random value. And then we will copy and paste in the log message. And then we will say that the random value is random value like that. So let's try and run it one more time. And that is not working. That's because I chose the wrong user here. Now, if we try it again, there we go. And if we go to the output pane here, we can see that now it's Ahmad Castronovo. Random number is 28, random string is something. We have the random date that is now Friday, 24th of February, 2023. And the random value is black. So we only have one activity left in this uh, demo, and that's um, the random address or the address activity. So let's just go to the activities again, go down here to the testing group, take the address activity, drag it in. And here we can select the country from which we want to generate an address. We will select Denmark. We can select the city. And we will just select all ball that's pretty close to where I live. And then we will create a new uh, variable called random address where this address will be saved. Now, if we go to our variables pane now, we can see that the random address is going to be a dictionary. So in order to sort of write this to the log file, we will need to convert this to a string. So what I'll do is I'll just drag in a log message activity as I usually do. And then inside of the message property, I will go to the advanced editor and I'm going to paste in just a little bit of code. And what this does is it takes all of the value pairs that are in the dictionary and then simply writes out each of the values separated by a new line. So if we click OK to this and run our automation, we should get the result of all of these activities now. Go to the output window, we can see that the name is Jermaine Nalepka and the random number is 28. There's a random string. Random date is Sunday 26th of February, 2023. Random value is blue and the random address is in Denmark in the city of Aalborg in the state or region of North Jutland. The postal code is 9000 and the street is Engbovei as it's called and the house number is eight. So this was a very simple video and some very simple activities to help you generate data when you need them, typically for testing purposes. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell button to get notifications, and then hopefully I will see you in the next video. Until then, take care and stay safe.